Business models use the principle of the market in order to plan for strategic decision making. A supply and demand curve provides a simple but efficient way to plan these actions. If something is in short supply and the demand is high, the price goes up. In organ transplantation, there is a perennial short supply of organs and a constantly equal low demand. This means if organs were to price in a market as a scarce commodity, the price would be extremely high and the consumer will have to pay very high prices because of its scarcity. However, organs today is not bought and sold in a market. And this is because there are significant ethical hurdles to this. If this would happen, the rich will have the benefit of life-saving transplantation procedures and the poor potentially could be used as spare body parts. For this reason, transplant professionals generally have steered away from the notion of an open market for organ transplantation. My question today is whether we could dramatically increase the supply of donors. Potentially, by increasing deceased donation, we could dramatically have an impact on the amount of organs that is supplied to people with end-stage organ disease on a daily basis. An example of this was done in South Africa where we have extremely high HIV rates. Since 2008, I've been using HIV-positive deceased donors to supply into the donation pool of South African organ transplantation. This had a great and dramatic effect on the waiting list for transplant. Potentially, this procedure could also impact on other economic aspects. For instance, patient quality of life, patient productivity, time on the waiting list, dialysis slots. This had been implemented now in many other countries outside of South Africa. There are other ways in which we can increase organs. One of these is through technology. Machine perfusion provides a way of repairing organs that have been damaged in donors before donation by, for instance, providing oxygen carriers to these organs before we use them to transplant. Taking quite a futuristic view, there is the potential of stem cell transplantation. Now, in type 1 diabetes, we know that the offer of islet cells are very in very high demand, and potentially we could enhance this by co-culturing them, for instance, with parathyroid cells. Certainly these things have been shown in animal models to be greatly successful. There are also the option of animals as such, for instance, transgenic pigs, which are now in the process of being utilized for organ transplantation for humans and not far in the future. Probably the greatest and most exciting way of increasing the organ donor pool will be through the 3D printing of organs combined with uh, stem cell technology. This procedure is probably going to be a game changer and will ask from transplant professionals to rethink both the economic and the ethical principles around transplantation. Despite these very exciting technologies, we are still today in a position where we are only utilizing a small amount of potential deceased donors, as depicted with the little green dot on this big slide. If we don't address this, we will continue to have serious ethical concerns in the field of transplantation. Probably, you might think the market could be a solution to this problem, but in the current circumstances, this is not really going to be a great extra supplement of organs and potentially can exploit poor people and vulnerable people to become spare organs for rich people. For this reason, we are not thinking that this is a potential solution. The Declaration of Istanbul is an important document that was designed to prevent exploitation, to prevent organs from becoming a commodity, and to address certain issues like advertising and markets in organ transplantation. This has certainly been a very important ethical reality for transplant professionals working in the field. We also know that supply and demand is happening across country boundaries. For instance, in Europe, where self-sufficiency on a country-by-country -country level is not a possibility, but a regional sharing of supply and demand is becoming a very important aspect for allocation of organs. I want to conclude by saying that we need to learn from the supply and demand curve to ethically transform transplantation's future by using new technology to use previously discarded organs, existing technology to expand the donor pool, 
and investing in future technology to make sure that more and more organs become available to patients who need life-saving treatment. Thank you.